Hello everyone, welcome back to our platform AgriEdic. As we had already started lecture series on nematology, with a continuation of that, I am going to take a lecture to, on biology of nematodes today. Uh, before starting today's lecture, let me have a brief introduction of myself. I am Tulsi, your educator for the subject entomology and nematology. I had completed undergraduation from University of Agricultural Sciences, Darwad, Karnataka, MSc in Entomology at TNAU Coimbatur, Tamil Nadu, and I am the second topper in the department during the year 2021 to 23. And I am currently pursuing PhD in Entomology at IARI New Delhi. And I had secured 41 rank in JRF during the year 2021 and second rank in SRF during the year 2023. And also I had also cleared my ASRB net exam in Entomology during the year 2023. Today's lecture will be on biology of nematodes, where we can uh, able to uh, know about the concepts related to life cycle of the nematodes, embryonic development, uh, like hatching behavior of the nematodes, molting, and some of the uh, concepts like feeding behavior and uh, reproduction, and even uh, like um, uh, some of the biotypes which are found in nematodes. Without delay, let me start today's lecture. Biology of plant parasitic nematodes. Uh, when we uh, heard the term that is biology, what comes to our mind is life cycle. Uh, when you, uh, someone gave a question like explain biology of uh, uh, insect, what you will be explaining like egg, larva, pupa, adult, those periods you will be explaining. In the same concept, uh, when we talk of, uh, when we take the nematode, Mainly, uh, the life cycle of nematode comprises of six stages that is, egg, four juvenile stage, and adult stage. Uh, I, I had used the word that, that is juvenile. What is actually a juvenile? The juvenile is nothing but it is the immature stage of nematode which is referred as juvenile. In, mainly in nematode, there are four juvenile stages which are found in nematode life cycle and how the juveniles will be like they will be similar to the adult in appearance but except in size and uh, gonad development it varies from the adult like similar in appearance to the adult but uh, only variation is its size and gonad development which are present in the male nematodes like uh, spicules, gubernaculum and bursa. These are found in only adult but not in juveniles. These differences you should know. And uh, if you consider the life cycle of the nematode, in this picture you can see that uh, egg stage and uh, four juveniles as I said, juvenile 1, 2, 3 and 4 and finally the adult stage. Uh, when the nematode is turning from juvenile 1 to juvenile 2, it undergoes a molting that is first molting. Uh, what is molting? It is nothing but uh, in simple way we can tell that casting of the old cuticle and the formation of new cuticle. And when the juvenile 1 is turned into juvenile 2, here the first molting will take place in between them. and uh, when the juvenile second is turned into juvenile three, here the second molting will take place in between those. And molting, uh, that is the juvenile three undergoes molting again to form juvenile four. And the last molting, that is fourth molting, will take place in between juvenile four and adult, in, adult nematode stage. Uh, the most important point you have to remember in the exam point of view is uh, how many moltings uh, did the nematode undergoes in a life cycle. Four moltings nematodes undergoes in a life cycle. And one more important thing is how many life stages are present in a nematode. That is six life stages. For JRF point of view, you need to know only the basic concepts. Like uh, you no need to go in very depth in the nematology. M mainly they will be uh, focusing on basic concepts. Like uh, how many stages are present in nematode. That is six stages. And uh, how many uh, maltings uh, did the nematode undergoing? Like four maltings. And the first 
courting which is taking place within the egg cell and the second stage juvenile will come out by the rupturing the egg cell as J2. This sentence which means that uh, from X stage to J1 stage, uh, the nemato that is the juvenile uh, J1 will develop inside the egg itself. Inside the egg itself, J1 will uh, develop and it get converted, it undergoes molting that is first molting inside the egg cell itself and which results in the formation of J2 stage. Only the J2 stage will come out from the X stage. Uh, whether this phenomena takes place in all nematodes? No. Most commonly, that is, that is most uh, plant parasitic nematodes belonging to that is Thailanchidae. These uh, only the first molting will take place inside the egg cell itself. But the J2 stage, uh, which leads to the formation of J2 stage, and the J2 stage will come out from the egg cell. But whereas uh, there are some exceptions. Um, in case of dorylamids, by this time you might be knowing what is dorylamids and uh, the nematodes coming under dorylamids like Z uh, Ziphinima index and Longidorus, these comes under dorylamids. Uh, here the first molting will take place outside the egg cell. Then which stage actually the uh, come out from the egg cell? J1 stage. Here the J1 stage will come out from the egg cell. The only difference is um, in case of most plant parasitic nematode that is Tylanchids, J2 will come out from the egg cell but in case of Dorylamids that is Ziphinima and uh, Longidorus, uh, the first molting will take place outside the, outside the egg cell. Here the J, J1 stage will come out from the egg cell. And you know that for every time the larval cuticle is shed after each molting. And uh, uh, coming to the egg or egg mass of the nematode, the nematode eggs are usually oval in shape and they are covered by three membranes that is the outer wall is made up of mainly protein that is so called as external protein layer which is mainly secreted by the female nematode that is uterus uh, from the uterus wall and the middle layer which is also called as true shell layer which is secreted by the egg itself and uh, middle layer is made up of chitin and the inner layer is made up of lipid and the presence of chitin will varies from species to species. Next coming to the embryonic development that is actually uh, the nematode will lay the egg uh, will lay the egg. The, which will be single cell that is the single cell development of the single cell egg cell egg cell into the multicellular embryo is nothing but embryogenesis normally we uh, we know that this phenomena then how it ac actually occurs in the nematode we will see this i'll explain in a sim simple way this is the egg cell which is single cell It undergoes cleavage that is uh, division will takes place uh, transfers to longitudinally to form S1 and P1 cell. These uh, divided cells are normally referred as blastomeres and this S1 is somatic cell and P1 is parental cell. Here again the S1 will divide further longitudinally to form A and B cells and whereas P1 will divide further to form that is transversely they it divides to further and it can uh, form into S2 and P2. Uh, how this uh, looks actually this is like T shape. Arrangement is like T shape and later it is rearranged in the form of rhombite shape. Here the A and B cell will lead to the formation of ectodermal cells and whereas S2 will lead to the formation of endoderm 
mesoderm and stomodium tissue this you have to remember like from where the ectodermal cells has been derived from s1 and from where the endoderm mesoderm and stomodium has been derived that is from s2 and it undergoes further division like longitudinally and transversely many times it undergoes division mainly mitotic division it undergoes and uh, it lead to the stage called blastula which is covered by a single epidermal cells and here the body will be fluid filled cavity and which finally leads to a stage called gastrula stage here the um, embryo has been like early embryo has been formed which is in flattened stage like flattened shape finally leading to the formation of worm like structure that is nematode see let, let us see in the previous picture as i explained now the same thing uh, the same process uh, takes place here see this is the single egg cell and it finally divides into two parts that is s1 and p1 here the s1 will again uh, divides longitudinally that is uh, a and b cells are formed and uh, again this p1 will divide in further to form s2 and p2 cell and whereas s2 will uh, leads to the formation of uh, endoderm mesoderm and uh, stomatia tissue here you can see but whereas a and b will uh, lead to the formation of ectodermal cell and the gonads of the nematode are usually derived from the p5 you will be seeing uh, the uh, i will be explaining this in the next slide and the uh, blastula stage as i said that they are mainly uh, arranged by single layer of cells which is fluid filled sphere and the gastrula stage it is the early embryo stage which mainly consists of open mouth this see here you can in this figure you can note down open mouth sac like body consisting of two layers of cell and finally leading to the formation of worm like structure that is nematode and the first stage that is the first juvenile has been formed inside the egg shell this is how the nematode that is juvenile is formed inside the egg shell from single celled egg to the embryo and the next uh, next year comes is um, how the actually uh, each cell has its function own, own function like uh, s1 is having function like it mainly performs like ectodermal epithelium uh, i forgot to mention you about one uh, like uh, one point that cleavage is determinate in case of nematode this is the most important determinate in the sense the fate of each individual divided cell uh, is predetermined early itself uh, which means the function of each cell has been determined itself and uh, one more thing is the whenever the uh, daughter cell has been divided it doesn't have any uh, like totipotency to generate into the complete embryo this is what the cleavage is determinate uh, for example uh, this is in case of nematodes a uh, cleavage is indeterminate i will give one example like in normally in vertebrates and echinoderms uh, cleavage will be indeterminate and uh, coming back to this uh, picture that is p not is the single cell egg which divides into s1 and p1 here s1 leads to the formation of ectodermal epithelium and whereas p1 again divides into s2 and p2 here the s2 that these are nothing but cells which are um, forming uh, 
some of the uh, structures like s2 is uh, developing into muscles and parts of esophagus and intestine and endoderm mesoderm and stomadium and here the p2 is divided into s3 and p3 where S3 is uh, converted to or leads to the formation of ectodermal epithelium of the posterior body. And here uh, the P3 is again undergo cleavage to form S4 and P4. S4 here is uh, lead to the formation of rectum and associated structure. And here the P4 again divides into S5 and P5. Uh, S5 again divides into S5-1 and S5-2 uh, which uh, mainly uh, leads to epithelium of germine which main uh, covers that germinal cells and here the p5 again subdivided into g1 g2 that is germinal cells uh, as i said that mainly gonads have been derived from the p5 cells uh, the only thing you have to remember from this um, slide is uh, like um, uh, if they if there is a question like from where the ectodermal epithelium has been derived the answer will be s1 and from where the gonads have been derived, that, that will be P5. Coming to the next concept that is the hatching. Hatching is nothing but the emergence of the juveniles from the egg. See, you can see in the figure that is this is the cyst nematode. Uh, this, uh, this is the cyst. How the juveniles is emerging from the uh, body of the cyst. Cysts are nothing but it is a female, uh, body, female uh, nematode. Uh, mainly it comprises of X in its body and uh, how the hatching will take place. Mainly the hatching will take place in response to the stimulus or uh, which is produced from the host. Uh, host in the sense uh, nothing but that is the plant, plant roots or plant parts. Uh, some of the plants will uh, secrete some of the compounds which will make the uh, eggs, uh, stimulate the eggs to hatch. Uh, but in some nematodes like uh, Milodogony root knot nematodes, they, uh, it does not require any stimulation for hatching. But in case, uh, there are also some examples uh, the uh, with the presence of stimulus only, the nematode head will be hatched. For example, that is Glovodora rostochinensis, you know that this is the potato cyst nematode. This hatch in response to root exudates which is produced by the solanaceous crops like tomato and potato. The root exudates are uh, secreted from these plants will make the cyst to um, like cyst to hatch and juveniles are uh, emerged from the cyst. And uh, if you go in depth like uh, in specifically if you talk that is the Solanoclepin A. It is the compound which is secreted from the root exudates of the potato, which will um, stimulate the hatching of Globodora rostochinensis X. And one more example is glycoclepin, glycoclepin A, which is secreted from the root exudates of soya bean soya bean plant which will stimulate for the emergence of uh, juveniles from cyst that is heterodora glycins nematode. These are mainly two compounds uh, like uh, specifically responsible for the hatching of particular nematodes. Um, after uh, how the juvenile will come out uh, from the um, the, from a, from the eggshell that is after reaching a particular growth of the growth and favorable conditions are present the juveniles will make out like vigorous movements will take place inside the eggshell itself which leads to the formation like uh, bulging of the egg membrane due to its more like juvenile will be present inside the eggshell uh, due to its uh, like growth will be increased size will be increased that makes the egg membrane to bulge out and uh, it causes vigorous movements and uh, normally the juveniles uh, we know that the stylate will be present in the plant parasitic nematodes which act as a knee, uh, needle see for us uh, uh, it, it will make like uh, it will make like tapping or uh, uh, drilling a hole like uh, structure 
which will make perforations on the eggshell and uh, it will come, which will allow it to come out from the eggshell uh, in simple way if you want to understand means if you consider a plastic bottle and if you make uh, if you want to make a hole on the hole on the plastic bottle you will use the needle like uh, continuously tapping over it or drilling over the needle some perforations can be made like that the same structure that is the stylet is present in the nematode which will uh, will be in the needle needle like structure which uh, continue on continuously tapping or continuously drilling uh, this will allow the juniors will come out from the excel that is around 40 to 90 times it will may it will tap the uh, excel per minute this is this is normal average weight average rate and finally the juvenile will emerge out by breaking the excel at perforated place uh, this can be seen uh, uh, in pratilenkas that is uh, lesion nematode paratilenkas that is pin nematode and nacobus and uh, melodagenin that is root knot nematodes breakdown of the excel may be enzymatic and mechanical action Due to the secretion of some of the enzymes like uh, uh, chitinase or uh, protease, these uh, helps in the uh, these helps in the breakdown of the eggshell. And uh, mechanical action is nothing but with the use of uh, stylet, the breakdown will take place and the juveniles will emerge out from the eggshell. The next concept is about the molting or eclosion. Molting is nothing but shedding of the old cuticle to form the new critical. Why actually molting will take place? Like uh, if the nematode wants to grow in size, mainly for the reason of growth and development, molting will take place. And the one more reason is like uh, development of some of the structures um, which will make it to adapt into certain environmental conditions like uh, high temperature, high moisture, um, through molting, through molting, the like well, it will turn into one stage to other stage. The it will develop into some of the other uh, important structures which will cope up with the extreme environmental conditions. The hatch juvenile, as I said, it will look resemblance similar like adult only, like it differs in body size and gonad development. And most commonly, the juvenile will undergo some of the changes in the form, like in anterior and posterior in order to accommodate or form in order to for, lead to the formation of gonads and molting usually initiated when the nematodes will attain physiological maturity and the neurosecretory cells you know that are present in the nematodes mainly stimulate to the secretion of some of the enzymes uh, which are involved in the formation of in the process of molting and these are also controlled by some of the hormones and uh, growth in nematodes is associated with a molting which usually occurs that is four times like from J1 to J2 stage four times increasing growth can be seen and during the molting what actually the uh, cuticle is shed off like what organs are shed off for example cuticle lining of the stoma stylet esophagus ulva cloaca rectum amphids phasmids and excre excretory pore are shed off during the process of molting because these are lined by the cuticle and um, at each time whenever we know that uh, during the molting the, the, the nematode will becomes inactive and the hypodermis which is involved in the formation of new cuticle is becomes metabolically active. And one more thing you have to remember is uh, we know that in stylet there are mainly three parts that is conus, shaft and knob. Here the conus will shed off at each time of molting whereas shaft and knob are reabsorbed at each time of molting. This is the most important point you have to remember because it is like tricky question you will be um, able to uh, like you won't be able to remember this one. Only the conus part is shed off but shaft and knob will be uh, 
completely reabsorbed every time at the uh, time of molting. And one more thing is here, esophageal uh, lumen. It is also reabsorbed and reformed at each time of molting. These two points are most important in the JR point of view. And the next concept is host finding. Now the nematode, uh, that is the juvenile has, has been come out from the egg. See, you can see in the figure here, it is the cyst and the uh, juveniles, juveniles are formed inside the egg and it has been hatched out from the egg and it will uh, go in search of host. This is the plant root. This will search the root that which is suitable for me, uh, like uh, for the nematode to make its uh, survival or reproduction. Uh, most commonly plant parasitic nematodes, we know that they are obligatory in nature, which means that the host uh, is uh, compulsory needed for their survival and reproduction or else to complete its life cycle. And the most commonly they are host specific in nature. And the key, uh, some of the organs which are involved in finding of the host are like amphids. These are paired chemosensory organs which are located on the head and uh, lateral in position. These play an important role in, in the host uh, finding mechanism through chemotaxis because these are sensory in nature. So the, they will be able to find out the uh, suitable host uh, for the nematode. And the mechanism of host finding was uh, proposed by Zuckerman and Jensen in the year 1986. Uh, how actually uh, these uh, chemosensory uh, organ that is the amphids are involved in host finding mechanism is they mainly comprises of cuticular receptors which is secreted mainly by amphids and uh, these helps in binding of specific molecules secreted by the host that is if consider this is a cuticular receptor which is secreted from the amphids and um, this is the compound that is a specific sum of the molecule which is secreted from the root exudates of particular host plant. Through this binding that is the compatible binding only the host is uh, that is the nematode, nematode is able to find out this suitable host then only it goes and attacks it and uh, led to the cause of infection uh, and uh, finally leading to the formation of like uh, feeding and uh, other development will takes place. The binding of chemotactic factor that is that is root exudase and particular factor will work like the lock and key system because uh, you know that for every particular lock there will be specific key. With the use of that key only, we'll be able to open the lock. In the same manner, here the, for every particular receptor, that is the cuticular receptor, there will be specific uh, molecule, that is the specific um, compound, which is able to bind it. And then only the host is able to, uh, then only the nematode is able to find out its uh, particular host. And uh, in some cases, that is the root exudates that is uh, uh, secreted from the host, host plant will act as a stimulant for molting as in case of paratelincus nanus that is the pin nematode uh, mainly to the fourth stage that is the juvenile molt. J4 is molt uh, undergoes molting to form adult in case of paratelincus nanus that is the pin nematode only with the response uh, that is the stimulus of root exudates and the uh, the other organs which are involved in the production of the enzyme which is responsible for the molting are that is the emisonids. These are actually biconvex, semicircular in shape. Uh, and up, uh, act as a sensor and uh, the, these are also sensory in function which helps in the secretion of some of the enzymes which are responsible for the molting. And the location of emisonids is anterior to excretory pore.
and next comes here is feeding say up to now you have seen hatching that is the nematode um, has been nematode egg has been hatched and the juvenile has been come out and even you have seen the uh, like host finding mechanism that how that nematode is able to find out the host the nematode has been now uh, is able to find out the host then next is the feeding how it is able to form a feeding site most of the plant parasitic nematodes will live in the soil and feed on the host roots from the outside itself and the the tacto receptors these are nothing but touch receptors which are present on the lip region of the nematode along with that gentle probing by the stylet probing is nothing but like searching or jabbing nematode uh, along with the touch receptors it will search for the suitable feeding site that is uh, whether this site is suitable for feeding or not that has been done with the help of tacto receptors along with the help of stylet and uh, most common uh, favored site for feeding of the nematode is uh, growth tips growing tips of the roots and the process of feeding will begins with the insertion of the stylet in, inside the cell see you can see in the picture this is the stylet and this is the cell here the nematode stylet has been inserted inside the plant tissue and led to the formation of that is the feeding tube and certain enzymatic secretions are secreted from the dorsal esophageal gland which will flow from the that is uh, from or through the stylet lumen this is stylet lumen and it is uh, secreted into the cell cytoplasm here the cell in the cell cytoplasm enzymatic secretions have been secre uh, secreted where the semi where the digestion of this cellular contents will takes place and the semi digested food will be ingested uh, due to the capillary action and pump, uh, pumping action of the esophagus due to the like uh, pumping action of the esophagus the cellular content which is present in the plant will be sucked by the nematode through the stylet and the median bulb which is uh, uh, which is highly muscular in organ um, the median bulb it is also called as metacarpus normally you know that esophagus is having three parts that is uh, carpus isthmus and basal bulb here again carpus has been divided into procarpus or and metacarpus or which is also called as median bulb median bulb usually present in the nematode is highly musculated in nature it will start pulsating very fast due to this contraction of the muscles the uh, pressure in the uh, inside the median bulb it will become negative negatively which means that the solutes present inside the uh, median bulb uh, will become dilated uh, in the sense the negative pressure is uh, created which will help for the nematode to suck the plant sap from the cytoplasm and the unidirectional flow of the food is regulated by the cardiac valves which are present at the junction of esophagus and intestine because here the cardiac valves will helps to prevent regurgitation of the regurgitation of the food which is taken inside the nematode body and here for every time whenever the nematode starts feeding uh, a feeding tube is formed at the stylet tip and um, stylet tip and also uh, and affected cell this is the affected cell here you can see this is the feeding tube which is formed at stylet tip this is the stylet tip uh, this feeding tube is usually formed uh, from the enzymatic secretions which is secreted from the dorsal esophageal uh, glands Uh, whenever the it sucks the cellular contents from the cell cytoplasm the digested food will moves into the median bulb later it will move into the intestine 
and there again uh, digestion and absorption will takes place in simple way you can tell that the pumping action of the median bulb which leads to the uh, sucking of the cell sap from the plant cell through the feeding tube which will move into the stylate lumen this is uh, this is um, uh, like a, in normal way we can explain and wall of the feeding tube will act as a micro filter which will prevent the entry of the cell organelles into the tube and mainly protect the stylet from clogging this is the wall of the stylet tube here you can see which will uh, act as a micro filter because it will prevent the entry of other cell cell organelles into the feeding tube and thereby preventing the clogging of the stylet okay now the nematode started uh, feeding inside the root tissue or a plant cell um, up to some time it will feed uh, after some time the nim presence of cellular contents will get somehow exhausted then what the nematode will uh, do again uh, the stylet is withdrawn from that uh, plant cell and it will go in search of new host again the similar process will be repeated like uh, insertion of the stylet tube and establishment of the feeding tube and uh, digestion of the cellular contents it most commonly happens in uh, migratory nematodes uh, like um, pratylenchus uh, and rhodophyllus uh, nematode that is the burrowing nematode well, then what happens in case of um, sedentary nematodes is uh, like uh, root knot nematode and cyst nematode the nematodes will enter into the like this is the root will enter into the root uh, root tissue there uh, it gets settled at one place and it may induces some of the adaptive changes in the host itself which will uh, allow it to uh, feed continuously uh, that is uh, which will make interruptive flow of nutrients and uh, minerals continuously without affecting uh, any uh, like uh, without exhausting inside the root like that the sedentary nematodes will induce the adaptive changes next concept is reproduction and most uh, we know that most of the plant parasitic nematodes are dioecious or bisexual in nature uh, in the sense they are having male separate male and female separate female sex and uh, male sex are present in most of the uh, nematodes and they are also having highly developed sensory system which can able to attract the um, opposite sex that is uh, uh, with the help of production of pheromones which is secreted from the females uh, mainly perceived by the males through the help of phasmids these are present in the tail region of male nematodes with the help of these phasmids that is uh, these are mainly sensory in structure with the help of phasmids they are able to recognize or sense the secretion that is which is made by the females that is pheromones and during mating uh, normally the spicules are present in the male nematode those are inserted into the vagina of the female and the caudal ale that is the bursa which is also called as bursa see this is the nematode and these are the caudal ale which are present in the male nematodes they uh, what is the function of the bursa is mainly they will hold the female during copulation and these are mainly uh, usually present may, uh, like specifically present in the male nematode only and the sperms are passed through the through the cloacal aperture uh, into the female genital tract uh, and they are stored in the spermatica of female here the sperms are stored in female nematode and uh, obviously uh, later the after some time the oocytes is re uh, released from the ovary all and it uh, the sperm is released from the spermatica both will uh, undergo fertilization to form offspring and uh, in case of some of the nematodes where males are absent or males are rare in such cases parthenogenesis will takes place what is parthenogenesis it is nothing but production of offsprings from unfertilized eggs
this is nothing but parthenogenesis and uh, some other cases um, through extreme environmental conditions the amphimictic condition which is present in the nematode actually the uh, normal condition amphimictic uh, will be uh, there in uh, nematodes like uh, in case of uh, root knot nematode milada gyni uh, but uh, due to some extreme environmental conditions they will undergo uh, parthenogenesis condition and rarely we can see hermaphroditic condition in some of the nematodes uh, for example in case of uh, heteroabditis that is uh, uh, which belongs to entomopathogenic that is entomopathogenic nematode it usually uh, has uh, both male and female uh, reproductive organ in the same uh, individual only here in the same individual the male and female organs will be present that is this condition is known as hermaphroditic condition and uh, the number of eggs which is laid by the female that is the which is normally referred as fecundity it lays uh, varies from species to species like in case of ectoparasitic and migratory endoparasites it lays around 10 to 25 eggs and in case of sedentary and semi endoparasitic nematodes it lays around 50 to 500 eggs and coming to the biological races it is also referred as biotypes. And, uh, normally, we will refer a single species of nematode uh, represent a gene pool. Here, the population which is present, uh, population of nematode varies within the species. Like, uh, what is population? Uh, group of species. Normally, we refer as group of species. If a po population of nematodes within a species varies, due to certain reasons like um, physiological, behavioral, behavioral and uh, its reproduction capacity and its pathogenic ability consider uh, within the species itself it varies that is termed as biological races or biotypes. Why it happens? Because uh, uh, due to exposure to the extreme environmental conditions like high temperature or high moisture or low moisture some of the genetic changes will take place inside the body itself or uh, some of the mutations will uh, arise which led to the formation of new races that is the biological races. And these uh, formation of new species or new biotypes will uh, mainly cope up with the uh, like uh, new environmental conditions. And in that, you have to remember the most commonly four terms that is host races, biotypes, pathotypes and ecotypes. We will see what are the difference between these two, these four. Host races. Uh, when we talk about the host uh, races, it mainly, uh, mainly considered about here the crop or cultivar. With respect to crop and cultivar, it varies. When populations differs in the capability of multiplying on some of the specific host is referred as host races. Uh, I will explain here. Normally, Milodogyne arenaria, it is having two host races. Uh, for example, host uh, that is the host races one, the host race one is ha having ability to multiply on peanut. That is plus in the sense it is able to multiply on the peanut whereas the host 2 that is uh, the same Milodogyne arenaria is not having ability to multiply on the peanut. So this change, this, this differ difference is nothing but host races. Ability to multiply on different host differs within the species itself. That is nothing but host races. And Milodogyne incognita, it is having four host ranges or four host races. Here the cotton, when we consider cotton host and tobacco, host race one is not able to multiply on both the crops. But whereas host two, that is able to multiply on the tobacco but not on cotton. And OS3 is able to multiply on cotton but not on tobacco. And whereas OS4, it is able to multiply on both the crop species that is cotton and 
tobacco here the multiplication ability of the species that is the milodogaini incognita varies in the different host plants this is nothing but host races and uh, coming to the concept that is biotype actually host races and biotypes are most commonly uh, synonymous in nature uh, only difference is host races are uh, like explained with respect to plant or cultivar but biotype is uh, explained with respect to species of nematode see consider uh, example that is citrus nematode that is thylanculus semi penetrans it is having three um, three biotypes that is um, biotypes that is citrus ponsirus and mediterranean these are the three biotypes of citrus nematode and the species uh, of host are citrus species and uh, parsimon olive and trifoliate orange um in in case of bio, uh, biotype also population will differ, uh, population of a nematode will differ with respect to reproduction ability like citrus uh, biotype is having ability to reproduce on citrus parsimon olive but not on trifoliate orange and ponsirus that is uh, it can able to reproduce on citrus parsimon all uh, but not olive uh, but it can reproduce on trifoliate orange and whereas mediterranean it can reproduce on both that is citrus and uh, parsimon but not on olive and trifoliate orange see here the reproduction ability of the nematode will change according to the or uh, with respect to different species this is uh, uh, what uh, nothing but biotype and uh, one more concept is pathotype pathotype patho is nothing but its virulence ability here the pathogenic ability or virulence ability of the nematode is considered uh, when a population differing pathogenic ability uh, with respect to pathogenic ability of a nematode it is nothing but pathotype it is referred as pathotype for example globodora rostro chinensis it is having five pathotypes that is uh, which is referred as like uh, r ro1 2 3 4 5 and if you take if you consider for example two plants that is solanum tuberosum uh, which is a potato and one more plant is sulanum tuberosum subspecies that is andigena here the ro1 pathotype it is highly virulent on tuberosum which means this this plant is susceptible because the nematode is not able to establish uh, sorry nematode is able to establish its relationship with sulanum tuberosum and cause more uh, like more loss to the solanum tuberosum that is potato plant but ro1 is in the same manner it is less virulent which means that the plant is resistant to this nematode less virulent so with respect to virulence ability of the nematode it uh, the species will uh, differ this is nothing but pathotype and one more is like ecotypes these population sh uh, shows normally at optimum activity at different thermal regions which means like different uh, temperature moisture and different environmental conditions if the population will differ within this uh, behave or differ in with respect to these environmental conditions that is that is termed as ecotypes why this is most important is uh, normally uh, the breeding of breeding will takes place like a uh, development of resistant varieties um, the, the understanding these concepts will help in uh, developing a, any kind of resistant variety which helps in managing the nematode problem
so this is all about the today's lecture that is biology of nematodes if you have like any queries um, you can uh, drop a message that is in the comment box and thank you